Hi there, I'm Mr. Manoj and today I will be discussing the past paper, paper 42 for the A-level CIE students of 9701 syllabus. Um, before, before we start this, why don't you grab a copy of the question paper and make an attempt of this and once you finish, then why don't you come back and have a look and check back with, with my video and see how it went. Meanwhile, uh, don't forget to download the video, keep a copy of 2016 uh, data booklet with you and uh, uh, let's take it from there. Let's have a look at the first question. The first question, A part 1, says define enthalpy change of hydration. Now remember, when you define most of the things, particularly in topic 5, it's always related to one mole of any. You could be making one mole of a substance, you could be burning one mole of a substance, uh, you could be dissolving one mole of a substance. This particular thing involves dissolving one mole of ions to, in gaseous state to form ions in aqueous state. So that's what the definition basically highlights. So it's the enthalpy change enthalpy change when one, one mole of gas ions is dissolved in water to form aqueous ions. Second question says the student asked students to actually to write out an equation to show the hydration enthalpy of magnesium ion. Now, once again, as the definition clearly states, it's always with, re with respect to one mole of the ions. But as per the definition, what it means is you need to take magnesium ion in gaseous state. And since you are dissolving this in very large amount of water, so it's usually written as aqueous and it changes into magnesium ion in aqueous form. So whatever enthalpy change happens in this reaction will be considered as the hydration enthalpy of magnesium ion. Now in the third question, the question talks about comparing the hydration enthalpies for magnesium ion and calcium ion. And the question says, suggest the reason why hydration enthalpy of magnesium is more than that of calcium. Now the concept here is, the hydration enthalpies depends on the size of the ions or you could say charge density. Now if you look at your periodic table, there is a page, uh, your data booklet, there is a page which gives you the size of the ions. If you compare the size of the ions, as you see both of them they have the same charge but it's the magnesium ion which is smaller in size and therefore it has a higher charge density and that's the reason why its hydration enthalpy is actually higher. So that's the answer of the question. The reason why magnesium ions have a higher hydration enthalpy is because of its small ionic radii or you could say high charge density. Hi. The fourth question says why it is not possible for us to determine the, the enthalpy change of hydration of the oxide ion. Now don't forget oxide ion is a very small ion therefore it has a very high charge density. And the problem is it actually reacts with water to form a hydroxide ion and that's the problem. It doesn't exist as O2 minus aqueous. So what it does, it reacts with oxygen, uh, with uh, water to form hydroxide and just put a 2 here to balance the equation and that's the problem it doesn't stay as O2 minus aqueous so we really can't find out its enthalpy change. Moving on to B part of the question there's an equation given magnesium chloride uh, is being dissolved in water to form magnesium ions aqueous and chloride ions in aqueous and the question goes on and says um, what uh, describe a simple apparatus you could use and the measurements you would make to determine the value of delta H dot solution for MgCl2. Well basically this question has origin in topic 5 of AS level. You probably might have done questions regarding Q equals to MC delta T and you, could, you found the moles of the substance dissolve and that's how you basically found the enthalpy change of reactions. Well that's the concept here. So you basically have to dissolve a certain amount of magnesium chloride in a certain amount of water. That means you need to record how much magnesium chloride have you taken. So you need to find mass and moles of this one. You also need to find out how much was the heat exchange happening 
when magnesium chloride was dissolved in water. That means you need the volume of water which would suffice as mass. You also need to find initial temperature and the final temperature so you could work out your delta T. And don't forget you don't have to convert that into any other scale. Delta T is independent of any units. And once you have all that, you use the value of C and try to figure out the value of Q. That's the heat um, exchange happening with water. And you basically divide that by the moles of magnesium chloride. That's basically how you solve the whole question. But here, the question was only targeting you as to what would be the appropriate apparatus you would want. Well, first of all, you would definitely need a measuring cylinder to measure the volumes. You need a um, top pan balance uh, preferably the top pan balance must be two or three decimal places um, sensitivity so it can measure very accurately uh, you definitely need a thermometer um, you probably need weighing bottles that's to measure out the masses of magnesium chloride you you have to record the mass of the weighing bottle plus magnesium chloride and then when you tip the magnesium chloride um, into the calorie, calorie meter, you also need a calorie meter. And when you tip the magnesium chloride into the calorie meter, you also need to find the mass of the weighing bottle plus the residual magnesium chloride to try to figure out how much magnesium chloride was used. And that could be divided by its MR to find out the moles. So that would be a, a simple list of apparatus what you need. So the measurements that you would record definitely would be uh, you want to measure the volume or mass of H2O. You need to measure the initial temperature, the final temperature and obviously the difference between the two which is your delta T. And you also need to measure the mass of magnesium chloride which has been used in this experiment. So that's basically what is required here. Okay, let's have a look at the question number C, part 1. And this question says, uh, ask students to find the value of enthalpy change of solution for magnesium chloride solid. Now, basically what the question wanted you to do was to change magnesium chloride solid into magnesium chloride aqueous. So what would be the enthalpy change when one mole of magnesium chloride will actually dissolve uh, in a solution to form magnesium chloride in solution state? Now the question has given you some information. If you look at the question, it's, it gives you the information for magnesium chloride solid and it says that's minus 641. Now magnesium chloride solid is being made from its elements in natural state. So we have magnesium solid and chlorine gas and that's this process here is minus 641. The question also goes on and says, uh, gives the value of magnesium chloride, formation of magnesium chloride in aqueous uh, form. That means from the elements in aqueous form, this is minus 801. Now, using a typical Hess law that you studied in AS level, so basically the arrow is going up here, arrow is going up here. Hess law basically means this plus this equals to that. That's basically uh, the, the general idea of Hess law. So if you look carefully, since the arrow directions are opposite, so I'm going to switch the signs. So minus 641 actually becomes positive 641 there. And uh, that remains minus 801 because uh, the arrow directions are same. So when you work with this out, we get minus 160 as the answer for this question. Now, when we look at the second part of the question, it talks about calculation of hydrogen enthalpy for chloride ions. Now, um, to calculate that value, uh, first of all, you need to write down the, the equation to represent the solution enthalpy of magnesium chloride. So I dissolve magnesium chloride one mole again in water to form, you could write MgCl2 aqueous or you could just show this in the form of ions. This is actually more useful because you need to find the value of the hydration for chloride ions. So you require them in the aqueous state there. Now if you read the question, it also gives you about lattice energy of magnesium chloride as minus 2526. Lattice energy, if you look at the definition, is the energy released when one mole of an ionic compound is formed from its ions in gaseous state. So since we don't find it there, so we, we are going to write the magnesium ion gas and chloride ion gas here. And the arrow from here to here would represent the lattice enthalpy of magnesium chloride whose value has been given as minus 2526. 
The question also gives you the hydration enthalpy of magnesium ions and it says it's minus 1890. So we're going to make an arrow this way, minus 1890. The challenge for you is to figure out the uh, hydration enthalpy of the chloride ion. So that's the unknown there. That's what you're trying to find. Well, there are two ways to do it. You could write x and then make sure that when you get the final answer, divide it by 2 because there is 2 there. Or you could just write 2x right away. So either of the two choices you could take. So I'm just going to put 2x so it makes it, makes it much more easier. Remember, if you put x, you need to divide the final answer by 2. You still get the same. So all you have to do, uh, now this one, we got it from the previous question. This value, minus 160. So why don't you try to work it out? Remember, this equals to this plus this. Try to work it out, see what answer you get. Well, um, this is what you should, you should be getting. Um, I hope you got the answer as minus 398 kilojoules per mole. Don't forget, according to Hess law, that is the overall reaction, should be equal to your delta H1 on your left hand side, and that was on your right hand side. So that's how basically you get the value of X as minus 398. This question, question 1D, um, ask students to comment on the solubility of magnesium sulfate against barium sulfate. Now, don't forget these are group 2 metal sulfates. And as you go down the group, the solubility decreases. And the reasons are, are very clear. If you look at the size of the ions, the barium ion is definitely much more bigger compared to magnesium ion. So magnesium ion being smaller has got a high charge density. Now, we, we all know that lattice enthalpies and hydration enthalpies are directly involved in the compounds to be soluble. And hydration enthalpies always has to exceed the lattice enthalpies for, this to, for any substance to be highly soluble. Now, the, in, in the, when you look at magnesium, at the beginning of the, the early part of the group 2, the size of the ions are small and therefore they have much stronger lattices. They have a high lattice energy. It's difficult for them to break down. And as you go down to barium, the size of the barium ion is bigger. The lattices of barium is much, barium sulfate is much weaker. And therefore, it's quite easier for the hydrogen enthalpies to provide that much energy which helps to break down. So that's why barium sulfate is much more soluble compared to magnesium sulfate.